The most important part of any photo edit is that foundational starting point. And in my last video where I showed how we can use the develop raw tool to get things going, somebody asked a very valid question, which is why not just start this high contrast image with the HDR merge tool and go from there. It's a really valid point, but in this video, I want to show you why I prefer develop raw most of the time, the benefits of HDR and also its shortcomings. And at the end, I want to show you how we can actually leverage both of these two approaches to actually create the strongest starting point for any of your photo edits. All right, let's get into it. So this is the photo in question and the issues that we have are a blown out sky. It's far too bright. And then the shadows on the right hand side are also very dark. And I demonstrated as part of the last video how we can recover the highlights by bringing the highlights slider down and then boosting the shadows up to get more of a balanced starting point. Chell pointed out in his comment to me, we could start this an alternative way, and that is with this HDR merge tool. Surely that's exactly what this is designed for. So normally HDR would be combining differently exposed frames to create the best of both worlds and bring back all those highlights, but we can indeed introduce just one frame into Luminar Neo and see what it does for us. And as you can see here, it's recovered all of the sky information, all of the shadow information, We've got a lot of detail in the waterfall and in all the rocks as well. But the issue I have with this photo is it looks incredibly HDR like it's just got that feel about it. And that's not how I want to start my edits. It doesn't matter how much I play around with the other sliders to try and reintroduce the contrast that's kind of gone from this photo. I'm not going to be able to get it where I want to with this method. And so if I pop this into a temporary album down here, we can see I've got some different versions of this photo. So this is the one that I just edited with develop raw and I've only moved two sliders. So there's more that we can do with this file. And that is one of the reasons that I like to start with develop raw because we have more control. We can actually come in and change the color temperature. If that needs to be adjusted, we can also boost up the saturation. We can add some sharpness. If the optics need correcting, we have the ability to turn on auto distortion correction. We can get rid of any fringing. There are a lot of options for us inside of develop raw that just aren't there when we're using the HDR merge tool. Yes, we have some options in here, but it's not the level of finesse that we get with the develop raw tool. But having said that, there are elements of this HDR image that could be useful for us. So let's suppose that we did in fact start our edit just by dragging and dropping that original raw file into the HDR merge tool and we work with this. Well, how can we actually make this better? Well, what I'm going to do is open up through another layer, the original raw photo. And even as this is loaded in with the default of a 50% opacity, um, it already makes our HDR version look better blending these two layers together. So what we can do is just hide this layer and you'll see the HDR version. And now hopefully as a comparison to adding in the raw version, or even if I push the raw all the way to 100%, and then we hide this layer and then show it again. You can see just how far from reality this HDR version actually looks. So what we could do is just do a hybrid blend, that sort of 50-50 blend, and that already looks a lot better. We've kind of got the best of both worlds. We've got the sky reintroduced, we've got all this shadow detail, but the photo is borrowing that higher contrast from the original raw photo, and so it looks more believable. But you guys who follow the channel know I don't like to just go with what's good enough. I want to just squeeze every ounce of what's possible out of our photo editing. And so I've got an even better way of combining these two layers together. Let me show you. So I'm actually going to reorder these layers. So I'm putting the raw photo on the bottom and I'm going to make sure that the opacity for that is set to 100. We now have the HDR version on the top also with the opacity of 100. So we're seeing fully this layer. What I'm going to do is come into the masking section, grab my brush and with a strength of 50% and zero softness to get this done nice and quickly, I'm just going to paint over the top of this layer. And you might be thinking, why, why Anthony, are you doing that? Well, what I've done is effectively create exactly what we had before, which is a 50 50 blend between the two because I've masked away 50% of this top layer. So what's the point of that? Well, the benefit of doing it this way is we can now come back in with the masking 
grab a brush, and anywhere that we feel like we want to see more of the HDR effect, we can paint it in more heavily. Where we want to reduce it, we can just paint it away. And so now with a soft brush, I'm gonna come in and sort of make some alterations. So if I feel like it's getting a little bit too HDR over here and in the water, I can remove a bit more from over there. We could do the same over on this side of the foliage. And let's suppose that we wanted to see just a bit more crispiness in the waterfall. We can actually intensify the HDR look through there. You might decide that the clouds are also just a little bit kind of too crisp up there, uh, which is a result of that HDR look. Again, we can take that away. So let's just have a quick look at the mask to see what we've created. And you can see that the intensity of the mask, denoted by how intense the red is, kind of varies through our frame now. That's the sort of level of control that we can't achieve just by moving the opacity slider. We've been able to paint in the amount of the effect that we want into this photo. Now the benefit of this blending mode, if I hide this layer, is we don't just have to make do with the underlying raw photo as it is, we can come in and we can still use develop raw on this underlying layer. Hence the reason I was saying we can get the best of both worlds. So we can leave our contrast quite intense. So we're borrowing that contrast to go over the top of that HDR version. We can come in and grab the sharpening, bump that up. We can even throw in some noise reduction. Obviously we don't want to change the optics because if we do, it's not going to match the version above. So if I show the layer, we're gonna see a slight mismatch because one layer has had the optics corrected and one has not. And that's the benefit of tapping into the raw data is that Luminar Neo can correct the optics on the raw data. But once the raw data is not there anymore, as it's not in the HDR version, it's not able to do that. So I'm just gonna come back into the develop raw tool come down to the optics and make sure I turn that off. And now these two layers should match perfectly. And if I zoom in all the way to say 100%, you're gonna see that there is no misalignment whatsoever. Both layers match up perfectly. So now all we need to do so that we can continue with our edit is select both the layers. So with one layer selected, we hold shift, click on the other one, then right click and choose merge layers. And now we have a flattened layer that we use to continue our edit. So whatever tool we now apply, <laughs> of course, he's going for mystical. It's now affecting the photo as a whole before and after. And that's exactly what I did in the previous video, all about editing a landscape photo from a beginner's perspective. Just quickly before my conclusion on this, if you do want to get hold of Luminar Neo, I've got a link with a discount code in the description below, helps you out and it also supports the channel as well. Now, my conclusion for this is that I do still like the HDR merge tool, I've got nothing against it, but we do need to be mindful of that over-processed look that we can get, but hopefully using this method, you'll be able to leverage the HDR merge tool and also all of that control that we have with the develop raw tool. And if you'd like to see the video where I walk through every step involved in taking this photo from the raw version all the way through to this finished edit, then why don't you go and click that video right there. It was designed for beginner photographers, but I've had many messages from people who have been using Neo for many years and said they still learn a lot from that video. So I think it's well worth checking out. Hopefully I'll see you in that one there. Bye bye for now.